Hi, I'm Cody Lee. I'm a tech specialist here with CHS Agronomy. I'm here today to talk to you a little bit about Trivar. Um, specifically, I'm going to talk through uh, some of the best management practices, some kind of do's and don'ts when impregnating or blending your dry fertilizer. So first of all, what is Trivar? So Trivar is a fertilizer additive designed to increase your nutrient availability of your phosphate-based fertilizers. So your MAPs, DAPs, MESs, stuff like that. So how it does this is through chelate technology. So in the soil, you have your micronutrients and your phosphorus. And those like to bind with each other and form salt complexes that precipitate out a solution. And if everyone remembers, plants drink, right? They don't chew. So as soon as those salt complexes form, they become unavailable to the plant. So the idea behind the chelate on increasing the nutrient availability is that chelate comes in there and it binds or chelates around those micronutrients, uh, keeping them in solution. And that also prevents the phosphorus from tying up those micronutrients. So you're keeping everything in solution, which is key to nutrient availability. All right, so now let's get into um, these different blends here and impregnating your trivar. So today I have three blends that I created. I have an S10, which is a 124010, um, our urea, and then a mix, a 50 50 mix of urea and S10, um, just to show how Trivar acts with each of them. So the first one I have here is the S10, which is our phosphate based fertilizer, and I impregnated it with three to four quarts per acre of Trivar. I'm just going to stick my hand in here, kind of mix it around, and show you. It's not goopy or sticky at all, and the trivar or that chelate really adheres really well to your phosphate based fertilizers. The second blend I have here is urea. So, urea or nitrogen in general really isn't as porous as most of your phosphorus and potassium type fertilizers, so um, it doesn't bind or adhere nearly as well. Um, as with your phosphate based fertilizers, and that's why it's not designed for it. So I don't know if you can see here, it's kind of goopy, sticking to the bag a little bit, a little bit soupy. So this is what happens when you have a high concentration of trivar going into urea, like what you'd have at a blender. I'll just stick my hand in here really quick. As you can see here from my hand, it's really sticky, slimy, um, pearls sticking up. And that's what's going to cause you issues both in the blender, you can have stuff build up, and then you're going to have issues in the spreader with things clogging up. So, uh, when you're impregnating Trivar, remember, um, don't use it on urea. So if you have to do a blend, it is important to know that you treat your phosphate-based fertilizers first, um, wait till they're dry, and then mix them. And I don't know if you guys notice me cringing, but when you do um, impregnate, uh, Trivar with urea or anything that makes it kind of soupy, um, once it kind of gets liquidy, it starts to volatilize. So what I'm cringing about is all that ammonia in the room right now. So another thing is you don't want to lose your ammonia, so, or your nitrogen source. So here's the blend I have here. You got your urea and S10 in there. And I'm going to use my other hands, not the one with urea stuck to it. I'm going to mix it around right here. And as you can see here, there is nothing on my glove. It's pretty uniform. So if you have any questions, as always, feel free to reach out to a CHS uh, agronomy representative. Thanks.